and thanks for tuning in. Welcome to another episode of In the Studio. The program is brought to you by Davis Media Access and broadcasts on Davis Community Television, that's Comcast Channel 15 and uh, AT&T UVerse Menu 99. We're also online at dctv.davismedia.org and on YouTube. I'm Lynn Weaver and I'll be your host today. Enlisting smartphones and virtual technology for keeping us safe has been the latest new technology around the country. The White House, for example, has recently put in place a new program nationwide called Apps Against Abuse, AAA, uh, in an attempt to curb uh, domestic and sexual abuse and dated violence and uh, also other aggressions. And uh, they, this app, app main feature is to keep uh, people, young adults especially, uh, connected to their trusted friends and also providing them with very easy access to uh, local police departments and also um, hotlines, for example. Similarly, UC Davis has put in place some uh, very smart new technology and innovative programs in their continuous campaign to keep us safe on and off campus. And to talk about this uh, crucial topic, uh, I have invited two UC Davis experts to uh, comment and explain these new uh, programs and new apps. And I have here, I have the pleasure to have here with me Andy Fell. He is the Associate Director for uh, Science and Research Communication and the spokesperson for the UC Davis News and Media Relations, as well as the spokesperson for the police, the UC Davis Police Department. Thank you. Um, welcome. Andy has also, um, he's also well known on campus for his uh, egghead blog, which That's I enjoy right. very you. much. And then we have Lieutenant uh, Brian Buckley. He's the director of security for UC Davis. And uh, he's uh, here representing um, Chief uh, Matthew Carmichael. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being here. Now, I'm going to ask Brian first. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Aggie Guardian Ooh. app. Okay. And uh, it's a mobile app and for iPhones and Android devices, I believe. So, what does, wh what is it? Okay. Tell us. Well, first of all, I'd like to stop. Thank you for having us today. Um, from a security standpoint, obviously, um, anything that we can do to further the safety and security of everyone at uh, the connected to the university, whether it's students, faculty, administration, staff, <coughs> visitors. So um, the opportunity to talk about this one aspect of, of technology and security is very important to us. So thank you for that. Um, <coughs> Aggie Guardian is an app that um, developed out of a, a larger program that the university purchased um, called Rave Guardian, and we were able to rename it under our own moniker of Aggie, being Aggie sc uh, School. And the, the, basically the premise of the app is to allow um, anyone who is a UC affiliate, has a UC Davis uh, email address, um, to download the app onto their phone, put personal information into that that's theirs. It's yes. Kept, it's their personal information. And then it allows them to be, um, uh, I guess the proper way is to look at it, to, to ha have themselves be tracked on uh, trips that they may make across campus or anywhere within the vicinity of the university um, so that they can actually have kind of a virtual guardian that uh, follows them um, sh and is basically a, a protection for them to know that they're going to make it safely across campus to wherever they may want to go. The, the, the premise is you, <coughs> excuse me, you go in, 
you download the app, you fill in your personal identifying information into this form. Um, it then turns into the Aggie Guardian. And the example I would give you is what you would do is when you, let's suppose it's a, a student, it's 10 o'clock at night, um, and that student wants to travel from one building back to their dormitory. <clears throat> They've studied late and now it's time to head home. Um, normally in the past they may have come to us and called us for a physical escort, which we would be happy to do, and we'd still be happy to do to this day. But this allows them to say, all right, I am uh, going to be leaving here. I, it's going to take me 10 minutes to get to my dormitory. Um, I have people that I want to reach out to that have already been pre-approved in this app, uh, and I will let them know uh, that I am going to be making this trip, and it should take 10 minutes. And when I get to the other end of the trip, I go back into the app and say, I've made it successfully. I've, you turn it off, and it's a protection. Should something happen, should that 10 minutes elapse and the person has not reached their destination, there is concern, something has happened, the Aggie Guardian app automatically alerts whoever the guardian is. Mm -hmm. uh, the default would be the UC Davis Police Department, mm -hmm. but it could be anyone you as the student have chosen to be your guardian. And, th and that person then receives a, uh, a phone text email saying that this individual may be in difficulty they can try and reach out to the person and and that would be the premise of the whole thing so it's this is excellent it's excellent let's take a look i have a, a couple of pictures that i'd like <clears> to display uh they're perhaps a little difficult to see but perhaps andy uh, can you tell us what this is it's the welcome screen and this is assuming you have an android phone or a, a smartphone this is the first uh page you see well yes there's a, there's a welcome screen for yes. the app you can see there are three buttons at the bottom there <clears throat> one of them is to set the timer that Brian was yes. just talking about yes and that is probably the principal function of Aggie Guardian is you can set this timer that will count down and go off if you don't deactivate it yes so if I expect to say take, take 10 minutes to walk from the library back to my dorm I can set that timer yes and I can once I get to my destination I turn it off if I don't turn it off it goes off, it alerts the police or alerts one of my guardians. And the other items you see there are you have the ability to contact the police through the app. You can make a 911 call yes. to police from the app. You can also text a tip to the police department. Mm -hmm. So if you see something suspicious going on on campus, you can use the app to send uh, a quick piece of information to police dispatch. Well, that's wonderful. They would have a location, they have yes. some information, they can send an officer to investigate. Well, let's take a look at the second picture, and this is uh, the location. Now, I'm not certain if this is location the person with the app is at. This would be the location of the phone of the that phone. the person's using. So, so the app is tracking location the same way as when you use a mapping function on your phone. That's right, yes. Uh, so it's locating the phone in that way used by to the cell phone network. Right. So if the, um, once you set the timer, the police dispatch don't actually see anything except that a timer somewhere has been set. Yes. Only if the alarm goes off do they see your location from the phone. I see. And some status. And so then they can know where to send an officer to investigate. And by only seeing it if needed, uh, they uh, protect the privacy exactly. of the person. Exactly, it's protecting so, the person's yes. privacy. Yes, yeah. wouldn't you agree, Brian? Yeah, yeah yes. absolutely. Yes. It's, um, the particular uh, screenshot you have there is by the Arboretum, which um, is an area that is... Uh, Particularly it's, sensitive. It's a sensitive say. area. Yes. It's open, just if you don't know this, it's open 24-7 to yes. the entire public. Um, it the is app, open. not the Arboretum. No, the Arboretum. The Arboretum. Oh, the Arboretum. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's open 24 <laughs> hours a day, seven days a week. I thought it was open. No, people <laughs> run and use it. In fact, we're in the process okay. now. It's interesting that you happen to pick that one spot. Yeah. We're uh, in the process of um, uh, putting in uh, little stations with remote phones on that very walkway, the runway there, yes. so that uh, people that may not have a cell phone with them will be able That's to reach right. out to and, the police department And as that well. was my question. What if you <clears> don't have a smartphone? What do you do? So, um, of course, everybody has a smartphone these uh, these days. But uh, uh, there are also stations, aren't there, on campus, uh, well, not just on in the well, arboretum? I mean, the, the, the smartphone app is something we're offering as a service to the community. Yes. So there's a number of programs that we'll talk about 
to enhance campus security, such as the Safe Ride program, which we'll probably talk about in a minute. Yes, we will. Now, we don't at this time have those kind of emergency phones located around campus. Yes. But that is something, as Brian said, that's something that's being put in. Yes, and of course they're less, they're less evident or less accessible to uh, young people and faculty and so on who live with their iPhones uh, well, in their pockets and everything. Yes. People spend a lot of time on their phones these days. Well, I do. Yes, I certainly do, and I'm sure you do too. Let's. There is the third uh, picture that I like, and this is the safety timer. This is, yeah, yes, exactly. Now, uh, this is what Andy you were saying. You set it to a certain time. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if you forget to it deactivate will pro it? It will prompt you shortly yes. before it runs out. Oh, I see. So there is a prompt. A, an, a, 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 an acoustic, uh, I mean, is I it a ding, ding, ding prompt? Yeah, there's some kind of acoustic yes. prompt and a notification on your phone that your timer is about to expire. Do you want to deactivate it? So you don't become terribly annoying to the police department no. or your friends by no. uh, constantly <coughs> forgetting. And you do need to put in a, your num PIN number to deactivate, to set it and to deactivate it. I understand. And that's so that, say, somebody grabs your phone, they can't just turn it off. Uh, for for you, uh, so I'm very impressed. What a what a sophisticated uh, device, well, and yet so simple to use. It's a simple idea, and it has been deployed at some other universities as well, and they've had a good experience with it. So um, we're looking forward to seeing how well it works out at UC Davis. Well, um, the uh, the other comment that I had uh, is. Um, um, The application, this app is free only for people who have a UC Davis, uh, a UC Davis uh, um, email address, isn't that correct? That is correct. Yes. For the moment anyway. Yeah, the moment. And we'll, we'll review some of the applications like the warn me and the alarm sure. system, which I believe are open to all the community. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And so let's, let's go with that because I think the only thing that I have that comes to mind is have people abused this? Well, it really it's brand new. Um, it's only been out a couple of months. The anticipation is we're just concluding now with our, uh, our school year. Um, when we bring in our new uh, entering class this fall, uh, this is going to be a part of the rollout to give it to them as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm a parent, I'm going to love to hear about something like of this. Of course. Because as I always tell people yeah. from my realm, um, I'm entrusting you, meaning the UC Davis, the family, the, everybody, with my most important asset, my child. Yes, of course. So please take care of them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. As, that's what this is about. It sounds like a wonderful, wonderful, and a little bit later we're talking, going to talk about how do you, you promote this and uh, the outreach. Uh, so, but I wanted to, so there, there's about four uh, initiatives and smart uh, technology that I want to talk about to today. So let's go to the Safe Rides program because this is a, a fantastic program uh, from the way. So um, uh, can you describe it? Just yeah, in, I in really have to give my, uh, my boss, I mean I love my boss anyway, but um, this was kind of his brainchild. Um, to be quite honest with you, and it, Matt Carmichael. Matt Carmichael. Yes. 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 Wherever you are, Matt. <laughs> <coughs> so, if he gets a chance to watch this, he probably. At any he's rate, the guardian. He's the guardian. Angel. Angel. <laughs> Very good. That's what we'll call him from now on. That'll be on his door tomorrow morning. No. So the uh, it was his idea to um, first of all put on put vans around campus um, that could uh, take disabled people to and from wherever they needed to go um, with uh, campus. And he, um, amazingly enough, we did not have such a, a, a vehicle on on campus. Yes, it is. I well, mean, you, and here we are in 2014, now 15, yes. and we didn't have such a thing, so. Well, you do have uh, Unitran there. Correct, but I'm talking about something that could be specific to an to individual the within the yes. campus yes. that yes. you could go to and from yes. that's not a bus, that's off hours and on call on call yeah. because Thank you. Unitran yeah. is not on they're call. not on call they're not there <laughs> so it was his idea to take that um, that was probably the initial uh, concept and then it, it just sort of evolved into well let's move it into a uh, project where we can actually give students rides um, mostly from campus to places off campus 
mm -hmm. at times when Unitrans does not run, right. so that they can be safely, uh, you know, given a Sported, ride. There's a yes. ride on us. Yes. Um, no charge. Yes. You will be ho taken home safely at. at and again, using your smartphone, you, you, you book the ride, mm -hmm. uh, the driver knows who you are, mm -hmm. where you are, um, you know when the driver's coming, mm -hmm. actually, through the smartphone. Mm -hmm. It's very sophisticated, and um, it's grown in, in leaps and imagine. bounds. Yeah. I can imagine. So, so my question would be, how far can you take these students? Do you have a perimeter? It is in the city of Davis. So within someplace, the city of yeah, Davis? Yeah, it's pretty extensive. Yeah. Um, it really, again, it's kind of That's the off That's fabulous. Hours. I mean, anywhere yeah, it's in a, Davis. It's quite a, um, I don't know where we're finding the budget to do it, but we're, uh, we're doing it. And, uh, you know, I think he has, again, had the vision to uh, move this uh, forward. I know other, our sister campuses in other parts of the UC are looking to do it. And some of them already have some things to and this degree. And what about the medical school? Do you have such a service at the not medical at, school? Not, not, not at, at this the time. Moment. But yeah. hold that thought, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's again. This whole thing has evolved really within the last year, and um, we went from we were starting to track a couple, and then it's I think we're, we're up to a couple thousand rides, six thousand rides a month. Yep. Well, it, 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 it's amazing. it's it's the yeah. the new trend now. As I mentioned, the White House has uh, put out this uh, app, which I think it's uh, it was actually uh, Joe Biden and. Uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Sibelius, who came up with this. Hmm. And uh, I think it's a good start. But of course, it's a different, it's different. But I know other campuses uh, around the country have had, but not nearly as, as uh, extensive as what you have from my research. Yeah, anyway. We're in the process of having to buy more vans. Now, as our success and more drivers. And more drive. Well, the yes. interesting part is the, the, the beauty of this, too. And, you know, again, hats off to Matt Carmichael because he's made extensive use of what we call Aggie hosts. And they are students who receive security training, go through classes, and really are kind of adjunct to the police department. And I've used them plenty of times. And they're students. They're yeah. students, I but see. they wear a uniform. They don't have firearms and things like that. But they serve a great function of not being police, but not being civilians, and they can help. And they actually are drivers for these things. Yeah. That's so. very interesting. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the Citizens Academy as well a bit sure. later. But Andy, you had something to say. <laughs> well, I was going to say that the, the Aggie Host, uh, this, this is a great program that yes. has, was in existence before. It's expanded a lot under Chief Carmichael. And uh, his insight is to have students provide security for students. Yes. So the face that the students see around campus now, checking doors and saying hello to people and, and mm -hmm. just keeping mm -hmm. a lookout for suspicious activity, are other students. Yes. And they're driving the vans, they're, they're doing the walk arounds late at night. And this is thing. a great point because the face of students is perhaps less intimidating than the face of Sorry, Brian. The police department. <laughs> it's, well, it's more, more of a familiar face. Yeah. It's someone like me. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, it, it's great. It, it's great to do that. Now, uh, we have, um, uh, uh, I would like to show a short video clip uh, that is actually on your website. Oh, sure. And on YouTube. And that's why I stole it from YouTube. And uh, I think it's a, it's a very nice video clip. If we could have the, the video clip of the safe rides, that would be wonderful. And feel free to comment as we go along.
Hi, I'm Elijah with Safe Ride Services. Are you Tanya? Yeah. Great. Let me help you in the vehicle. Safe Rides is the escort service provided by the UC Davis Police Department. With a simple phone call or a few touches on your smartphone, an Aggie Ho security officer will pick you up from anywhere on campus to anywhere in Davis. The service also includes the campus's only 24-7 VIP wheelchair transportation. This is a great video. Any quick comment on this video? I think it shows very simply how the system works. You're, yes. Someone's working late at the library, they need to get back, they can call uh, the service through their, their phone and have a van of a train driver come and pick them up, take them where they need to go in Davis. It's fantastic. And I saw the bushes uh, quivering there. <laughs> that was and Andy behind the bush. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shaking the bushes. And I think we know that um, UC Davis is a, a pretty safe campus. This is a pretty so safe far, community. Yes. But it gives people the extra reassurance yes. that they can get where they want to go yes. in safety. Yes. And, and uh, again, I bring up the outreach and the uh, how do you promote this, uh, uh, these uh, apps because they are a deterrent if you promote them well maybe outside Well, we campus. have been working to roll this out in yes. the past uh, months or so through the news media, also through, um, we've been working the Student Affairs Office to roll this out through their websites and their material that goes directly yes. to students. Yes. And I expect in the fall, as we have the freshmen coming in and new students coming in, there'll be more outreach to them as well. And I think especially parents of new students will be very interested in these kind of measures. This is one of those that has caught fire on its own. Once you have a few students that I can get a free ride where I need to go yes. late at night, I mean, like of I say, we, uh, we, we're, we've done very well, and it's, it, it's, students are the best form of yes. uh, communication yeah. on this one, and yes. it's worked out very, very well. I'm so, so glad. And uh, actually, I did, see a, um, I did see an article in the Davis Enterprise, mm -hmm. uh, which, so, so if you put more articles and the community and perhaps the... Uh, the woodland paper would be nice. Uh, the, the thought that I have, and I might be wrong, is to try and reach people who hopefully read these publications and who, if you have strange ideas, they'll know that... Uh, well, we've had coverage doing. on local TV as well. So oh, it's good. Been in, in good. Well, uh, uh, we, are, um, uh, we are going on with uh, another, the Warn Me and the uh, mm -hmm. Alarm... Uh, and the alert, and the alert uh, systems. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, Andy, Brian, whoever? Well, uh, yes. Warn Me is the system that we use for early for rapid notification of the campus of a, an emergency. Yes. Um, after the Virginia Tech shooting incident, of course, yes. many campuses went into looked into adopting these kind of systems to tell the campus very quickly that there was some kind of life-threatening, life-safety emergency on campus. And it doesn't have to be, uh, unlike the app we just talked about, this anybody can sign up for. Right. So I see, which means, for example, people who are not connected to the university yes. can sign up. Uh, is your medium of distribution email, uh, mostly? Email and text message text and message. voice. Okay. So, so we encourage everybody on campus who has a UC Davis email address or a bland line phone. They're going to get is, it automatically. Is in automatically. Right. But we encourage people to go and add their cell phones so they can get cell phone calls and text messages as well. And the new system can also transmit through social media too. Wonderful. Wonderful. And there is a yes. facility for people who don't have a UC Davis yes. email address to add themselves, such as parents, mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. uh, contractors who are maybe working on, you, on the campus for a short period of time, um, other affiliate, other people who may be on campus, mm -hmm. affiliated with the campus, but don't have a necessarily a UC Davis login. Login. And uh, uh, the last um, innovative uh, program, and I'm going to look at Brian to uh, talk a little bit about it, is the citizen, uh, sorry, not the citizen, the cadet, 
Academy. Uh, can you, we, we have a few minutes left, so yeah, can you please, sure. I was going to show a video, but uh, I don't think we'll have time to do that, okay. but I refer people to the UC Davis uh, Police Department uh, uh, website. Uh, to, there's a very nice video there that uh, shows uh, what this Cadet Academy does. And it's very entertaining, but perhaps right. you can give us a preview. Again, I uh, keep giving a lot of accolades to my boss, but this again was his idea. He's going to be very, very... He's a very, very famous, <laughs> famous guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, no. He uh, he came up with it. And what about Andy? Goes, you haven't given any credit well, a Andy's, to Andy. Andy and I, are, it wasn't my idea. we're along for the ride, okay? <laughs> he, this guy, you just catch on his coattails, and yeah. then you go. Okay. So, uh, but he... Um, he recognized that there was a great pool of potential candidates for police officer uh, positions amongst our own, uh, obviously, uh, how many, 35,000 students each year. And rather than let that great pool of potential candidates simply come and go, um, here's a great opportunity should they have an interest in police work and have an interest in moving that uh, into that career field, why not go amongst them, develop find 30 or 40 uh, who would make a cadet class, go through, get the training. Uh, we provide all the training uh, individually to these students. Mm -hmm. It's somewhat rigorous, it's physical, it's uh, test taking, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. you know everything you would imagine from an academy. At the end of, the, of that particular time, they are actually pretty well suited to go to a full-born police academy. Um, and we ourselves have gone ahead and picked each year several of these students to go at our cost to one of these academies and then they graduate and we've hired some several of them. Do they so. get uh, academic credit for this? I is don't, there a major or a I minor? I don't know that. Incident? No, this is an no, academic program. So. This will yes. be on top of their academic work. I see. But these are the cadets are seniors. They're in their last mm -hmm. year at UC Davis. Mm -hmm. They had been good academic standing. Mm -hmm. And uh, after they graduate, uh, some will go to the police academy. Some get scholarships through the police department. And as Brian said, we have hired some as police officers here, and others have been hired in other police departments around California. There are a myriad of places in the state of California and elsewhere that have already hired mm -hmm. these graduates from our mm -hmm. own UC Davis student pool. Mm -hmm. so. so in other words, uh, you're hiring from within. That's, That's the, uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. And it gets well, back to what I said earlier yes. with the Aggie hosts. It's about students providing security yes. to students. Yes. And being recent students, they kind of get. Yes where students are yes. coming from. I'm afraid our time is up. It's gone so fast because it's been very interesting. We definitely would like to have you back some other time. Uh, thank you so much, Andy thank and you. Brian, for being available. I am delighted to have learned more and to have had you here. And uh, thank you all for watching. Um, you can see this program again uh, by streaming it on dctv.com davismedia.org and while you're there you can check out some of our other uh, previous in the studio episodes uh, there are a lot of very nice topics and outstanding guests so I'm Lynn Weaver you've been watching in the studio thank you all and see you next time